Hello, folks. This is the Nutty Knife Guy. And I'm actually going to get out to the workhorse today, folks. And uh, I got something that I uh, told you about last week when I first got it, along with a couple of other toys in a video uh, entitled, oddly enough, the Nutty Knife Guy's New Toy. Today, I am bringing you the K Bar Dog's Head. Da -da -da. Uh, uh, I have not had a K-Bar in my collection except for one of the little keychain uh, TKI K-Bars. Uh, I had had a traditional USMC K-Bar in my collection at one point, and I traded it away for... I can't remember what I traded away for for the collection, to tell you the truth. Uh, but uh, any American knife collector should have uh, a traditional K-Bar in his collection, really. Uh, but I don't, and I still don't, because this is not the completely a traditional USMC K-Bar. This is a dog's head, and it, there's got some differences. Now, I touched on this in my uh, like flash review of last week. Uh, there are a lot of people that just consider the K-Bar the perfect combat knife and don't want to hear otherwise. Uh, I disagree. I am a fan, I mean, I'm not a fan of the traditional K-Bar. And I'm not saying it's not a great knife. I am not saying it's not a legendary knife. I am not saying that um, many enemies of freedom and justice have perished at the end of a traditional K-Bar, or its edge, or possibly even its pommel. But I've never liked the way they felt in my hand. They're round and they're smooth. And they tend to turn in your hand when you're using them. Now they are slightly oval, at least the ones I've handled have been. But uh, they still tend to turn in your hand and they're not very grippy. So uh, I was uh, watching the podcast from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Guys Talk Knives, and one of the things they featured was the dog's head, and they also mentioned the fact that it was on sale. So guess where I got this? Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And my first reaction when I got it in my hand was, meh. I like it better than traditional K-bars that I've held, because at least it appears to me that the handle is slightly more oval instead of round and mitigates the turning factor, although it still will turn in your hand, I think. I haven't been out the doorpost yet, so we're going to see that. But just feeling it, it not the, doesn't inspire a whole lot of confidence in the grip. But it does have this pommel that has this overhang, which does mitigate one of the problems with traditional K-bars, is the hand actually sliding too far down the handle. Uh, another thing I like about this, better than a traditional K-Bar, is the guard does not come down like that. It doesn't turn in towards the hand. It's a straight, so you don't have the, the equivalent of the guard uh, jabbing you in the fingers or the whatever your hand. Uh, now, in the saber grip or the handshake grip, this pommel does protrude to the point where it does you know it, you i can't say it digs in here but you can see it, it makes contact with it there and it's not at least so far it hasn't been painful it's not even uncomfortable it's just distracting uh the blade and the bar tang uh some would call it a rat tail tang uh is as far as i can tell the exact same as traditional K-Bar. I've never had any trouble with the traditional K-Bar's blade. 1095 Crow Van. I mean, that's that's good steel. Nobody can say that's uh, uh, not good steel. Uh, it is peened like other K-Bars. Uh, incidentally, for new knife people out there, uh, there are a lot of counterfeit K-Bar products out there, uh, especially the, K the traditional USMC K-Bar. And um, 
that's one of the ways you can tell a fake one is if it's not peen. Can you see the peen? Can I turn it this way so you can see it better? Yeah, there you go. You see where it's peen? A lot of them just have screw on end caps. Some of them have Loctite or uh, other kind of adhesive to keep the cap from coming off. But uh, if it does, if it if the pommel doesn't look like this, it's probably not a real K bar. Uh, having said that, having said all of that, uh, I I'm not sorry that I bought this. It's a good solid knife. It's well made. Bent finish are great. But it doesn't sing to me. It handles okay. It feels okay. It's okay. Now I got another knife in that I uh, recently that uh, I uh, included in my little flash four flash reviews, the Nutty Knife Guys New Toys uh, that I really like, the Kubi Boulder. And I will review that. But this one, I'm glad to have it in my collection. And I probably will eventually get another actual USMC K-Bar uh, for the collection. But for now, this has scratched my K-Bar itch. Uh, but again, this is not going to be one of my favorite knives. Uh, I much prefer, for instance, my uh, Ontario SP6 fighter. It has all the good things about this knife and none of the uh, well, none of the bad things. Not really bad things about this knife, just not good things about this. It's just adequate. That's the best way to describe this knife so far. I gotta test it yet. Adequate. Uh, the sheath, incidentally, the sheaths are made in Mexico while the knives themselves are made in the United States, from what I understand. The sheath is okay. I mean it's well constructed. It's not going to fall apart. Excuse me, fall apart on you. But uh, that's all that can be said for it. It'll it'll work. Uh, if I was going to carry this out in the world, uh, it fits very snugly. Even without the strap, it's probably not going to go anywhere. The snap is still stiff, but it goes around the knife and it, it's very stable. It's got a nice white belt loop. It'll go on any belt. It's not molly or anything like that. Again, adequate. So, uh, that's really all I got to say about this knife so far. I'm going to go out to the war post. I'm going to cut up a detergent bottle. Uh, I'm going to do some chopping. And, of course, smash it on the war post. And, uh, We'll see if it, in, in, it can improve itself in my eyes. And now it is out. Do the war post. Okay. Looks like I got everything in frame here. We'll see what we can do with this thing. Uh, by the way, it's K-Bar, so it was shaving sharp out of the box. Haven't touched the edge. We'll show you this later, but that was one hell of a good cut. Sailing through this like air. Bad day for anybody. Okay. So far, so good. No damage as far as he was expecting any damage there. Okay. Now, what? The handle did get wet, and it's slippery as heck.
not rolling as much as I thought it did, but it is rolling a bit. really hard swings on it oh that was good for the blade I just hit a metal pole no damage blade does want to move in the hand Boy, does it penetrate. That went into that wood a solid third of an inch, maybe even half an inch. All right. Let's try this. Okay. Here we go. Sorry about the leaf bloater in the back in the background. People have no respect for knife documentaries. All right. Okay. You can see even after smacking on that pole, the blade is fine. I've never had any issues with the quality of K bars only their design. I am going to change locations and we'll see how this thing does at real chopping. Okay, got a fairly thick piece of dogwood in here. I've used this before. Put it in a vise so it shouldn't move too much. And we'll see how much of a chopper this thing is. I'm not going to exactly be at the perfect angle myself, but Tighten up that vice a bit. And we'll get a place that hasn't been chopped yet. Okay. Really tighten up this vice. really don't want to have to hold this up with my hand. Well, that's the spot I'm too. I get it where I want it to. Okay, we'll get this get together eventually. Okay, let's try the pummel for hammering. All right, now I'm going to give it a few more whacks. Don't have a lot of control on this blade to get it in the right area of the thing every time. It probably takes some practice. But the blade does like to roll in the hand. This does just knife this doesn't have the weight to 
to really dig into the wood. Now I'm going to try something, and I may hurt myself. But I'm going to take this pommel overhang, put it between his fingers like this to give the knife just a little bit more length and maybe a little bit more chopping power. Yeah, that would get uncomfortable in a hurry, but let me get this out of the vise. These are old chops. These are new chops, which you can see, I mean, could have got through this eventually, but it's not meant to really be a chopper. It's not a bushcraft knife. You can probably get away with a light camp knife, but this is a good hard stick. And again, you can see the edge. And again, I bounced it off of that pole out there by accident. I think that's an aluminum pole. And there's nothing there. We're going to pick you up and move you over here. And see how she is at making vampire deterrence. Let me go. Yeah, see, you can still get good bites in, even after all of that. And running it through that thick plastic bottle like I did couldn't have helped the edge any. But you can see, this is again hardwood and this is dry, but it cuts pretty well. And the camera went lopsided on me. Sorry about that, folks. And I guess you'll we'll both well, I'll just have to live with that. Uh, I don't know if we a little knot there. Get by that knot, and we might get some curls. Or not. Maybe it's just that kind of. There we go. I mean, you can get curls with it if you need to. But this, it's like the USMC. It's primarily a fighting knife, a utility knife second. So there it is. Go down to the basement and I'll give you final thoughts. Okay. After having used this thing a little bit, I have modified my opinion of it slightly. It performed better than I thought. As a fighting knife, uh, it would probably do very, very well. Which, but again, it's basically a traditional K bar with a few minor changes. The blade is a K bar is a traditional K bar fighting blade, so that's not a surprise. I guess. There are a lot of uh, enemies of freedom and justice that aren't breathing because of, one, because of a blade like this attached to the traditional USMC fighter. Uh, it does roll in the hand. Uh, when it got wet out there, it did get slick. But two things were very impressive about this thing. We're going to look at the water bottle here. Look at the bottle here. Okay, where's this at? Where is that? Okay, this is my first cut, and these are, these are thick bottles. That's why I use them for this. Let's see if I can. Okay, the cut goes from here all the way around to there. And these are not flimsy water bottles or even milk jugs. That's pretty thick. And 
I wasn't swinging for the fences. When I do these things, I you know when you're if, if you're using a knife for personal protection, if you're fighting with a knife, you don't do Captain Caveman swing. You let the edge do your work. If you swing too hard, then you don't have any recovery. It's too hard to get the knife going in another direction if you need it to. So I don't swing Captain Caveman. Uh, I mean, that would be a devastating cut. All right, now let's see where I did the stab and rip. Where is it? I know I did it, and I know it worked. Uh, well, okay, this is the second cut here on the really hard, tough part of the bottle. And uh, that's still a very, that's still a pretty deep cut. Uh, now, the question is, where's that stab and rip go? Ah. Now here's where the stab and rip went in, and here's where it came out. So what evidently happened, it went all the way through here. My blade went in a little far enough, and when I ripped it out, it was the, of course the thing was probably was hanging like this. I took out a substantial part of the bottom here. So I mean penetration, and a certain friend of mine is laughing now because I said penetration. You know who you are. Uh, but um, also with the stab, and you saw it out there where the knife was in the far enough end of that war post was supporting his own weight. Uh, that was with not a whole, you know, not again, not a Captain Caveman thrust against um, a target that gave a lot. Which means that the penetration uh, was is truly impressive. If they could change the handle and make it much less round, if they would even square, I would say even square it off and make it out of craton. I, I'm I don't know if K Bar makes the dog head with a craton handle, but if they did, I'd buy it in a second. I know they make this more expensive one, what do they call it, like the Patriot or the Freedom or something like that, that is pretty much this design with Kraton, but they don't call it the dog head. Uh, this knife, if the handle was not rounded and of a grippier material, I think they'd have a real solid winner on this hand, uh, on this. Now, with the chopping, this really does, it's a light knife. This is a very light knife. So it's not going to chop that much. And because it's not very heavy and it's not designed for chopping, when I was bouncing it off the, when I was chopping, it was really bouncing off of that hardwood. Uh, now that grip I tried, if you had some work gloves on, would help. If you had that pommel in here like Patho, would help give you some more, uh, some more leverage on chopping, but that's not what this is for. You could use this as a light camp knife, but it's a combat slash fighting knife. You know, the difference between a combat knife and a fighting knife are blurry, but my idea of a combat knife is somebody that uh, is some, that is carried, something that's carried by somebody who thinks they might get into combat and will need a good fighting knife that they could also use as a light camp knife. And much like the its cousin, the USMC K-Bar fighter, this will do that quite well. Uh, impressive performance on cutting and stabbing. Really impressive. But uh, the handle just is eh. If I were going to improve this knife, I would leave the, this on there, th this protrusion of the handle on there, because it is nice to have something to keep it from sliding, to keep the knife from sliding down your hand, which is actually really necessary with a knife that gets this slippery, with a handle that gets this slippery. But what I would not do, I would try to eliminate the, where this protrudes back here. Um, like I said, it's not, I can't call it uncomfortable. 
in the hand, but it is annoying. Uh, but I paid like $60 for this. A little less than that, I think. And I'm happy to have it. I mean, I bounced it off a pole, and I'll give you the edge again, and maybe uh, you can see it a little better. Uh, let's see. Maybe it worked better that way. Yeah, it worked better that way. And even hitting it with that aluminum pole didn't dent it. Or hitting the pole with it, I should say. Didn't dent it. And... Water jugs and chopping and, and carving and everything like that. The finish is still on it, which I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of good, well executed black coatings on knives, especially when they're high carbon steel uh, to prevent rust. If they're done right, Kbar does them right. Ontario does them right. Some other companies, not to be mentioned, usually doesn't do them right. Uh, so if I get from one of those companies that doesn't do black coating, I stay very well. I stay away from it. But uh, uh, never going to be one of my favorites. Uh, but it is still going to be uh, a pleasure to have have around. I know I will take it out and play with it and practice with it occasionally. And I'm not, you know, there are some knives in there when they when I'm doing my what I do in my practice is I kind of go through my knife collection, you know. Uh, every I, I have one part of my training where I carry the knife that I carry, my EDC knives I carry, that I carry all the time. I practice with those, and then I will do some drills with one of the other knives in my collection, and I just go through the collection a little bit at a time. So, I mean, and but there are some knives when it comes to when I do that that I don't look forward to it because I don't like the way they feel. But as a matter of practicality, I might not be fighting with one of my knives. You know, and uh, it could be a situation where I just have to grab a knife, any knife. So the more uh, the more types of knives you practice with, the better. This is not going to be one of the ones that I kind of dread. Oh man, I got to use this one tonight. This is going to be one of the ones where, oh, okay, it's the keyboard tonight. So there you have it. I mean, I will probably get a classic keyboard for the collection. And as I said, I'm not going, I don't want to part with this one. Uh, and the cutting performance was outstanding. It's definitely one of the better cut, uh, better cutters in my collection. Um, so I'm not going to, sorry I bought it. But I am not a K-Bar fanboy. And I'm not, ooh, ah, uh, it's a K-Bar. Uh, but if you, if you, uh, Having said, I mean, there is something to be said for the ooh-ah factor, for the nostalgia factor. Uh, just for, or just because it's so easy to recognize. Uh, and there's never been an issue with the quality of these knives, of K-Bar knives. K-Bar makes great stuff. Uh, it's just the handle. And I'm with the, when this was first designed with the technology they had available, uh, I mean... This was probably the best handle that they could put on it. Technology has advanced. And, but this is so iconic. This, this kind of handle is so iconic that there are knife makers that are putting it on, other knife makers, other than K-Bar, that put this thing on there just because it is so recognizable. I've got a Air Force survival knife that has a stacked leather handle, and I show it to people that don't know anything about knives. Ooh, K-Bar. And I'm like, no, it's not K-Bar. But it's got that handle. No, it's not a K-Bar. <laughs> so, there's that. And that's really all i got to say about it. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, devastating on the cuts. Absolutely devastating. And, yeah, I know uh, that it might not be the knife. I, uh, I've been practicing a lot of my technique lately on my cuts, my follow-through, my edge alignment. But honestly, uh, cutting with other knives, I get good results. But this one really surprised me. I think this knife, because of the, uh, just the way the blade is brown, it's got a saber grind. And uh, it's light, so it accelerates. Uh, I mean, it, this knife cut 
a lot better in my hands than uh, some of my others. I've got some ones in there cut really well, but I was surprised how this, how well this was this cut. So, uh, I will appraise. I will change my evaluation from adequate to more than adequate. Now, I guess that's the best way to uh, sum it up. Uh, but if you know, if you get one a K bar and you're not great like me, you're not crazy about the the classical K bar fighting knife. Might want to look at this. And with that, I bid you to draw your knives only in just purpose, sheathe them only with honor, and remember that without knives, life would be dull and pointless. I bid you goodbye.